Hello, welcome to the Roundhouse Podcast with Paul Solentrop of Wichita State University Strategic Communications. Thanks for listening. We appreciate your time. We're going to talk Wichita State softball in advance of the American Athletic Conference Championships, which start Wednesday at Wilkins Stadium. Our guests today are CC Wong and Kristen Nelson. CC is a senior infielder. She is hitting 476, currently tied for first nationally with Howard's Marin Jordan. CC is from British Columbia, Canada. She has 14 home runs and 13 doubles. Kristen is from LaPorte, Texas. She's a junior third baseman hitting a career best 321 with nine doubles. The Shockers are the fourth seed in the AAC championship. They play at 7 p.m. Wednesday at Wilkins Stadium against ninth seeded UTSA. The winner plays at 2.30 p.m. on Thursday against either Tulsa or South Florida. Kristen, you wear number 21 on your jersey. Is there a story with that jersey number? So, actually, when I was growing up, I used to be number 12. And then I had joined a team where one of my best friends, like, it was either she was number 12 or she was going home. So then I was just flipped the numbers around and then it stuck. So you were a good teammate, let your friend have the number that, that was really important to her. Yes. Okay. Cece, number 36. Is there anything fans need to know about why you wear number 36? I don't think there's as cool as a story as that one. Um, I think I came in here and they asked what uh, number I wanted, and I chose 16 at first, and then Coach B was like, how about 36? And I said, I'll wear it, and that's a pretty cool number because of Lolo. And so I was like, sure, why not? I'll wear that. That's a pretty cool number. Okay, following the footsteps of Lauren Mills. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, Kristen, tell us about your journey to softball. You played volleyball, I believe, in high school. How did you land on softball as, as your favorite? Well, I obviously played softball since very young. I started when I was about four years old. And it was always just my favorite. I always just had fun playing it. It's what my mom played. My dad was a baseball player. So it kind of just stuck in the family that softball was going to be it. And you've always been an excellent defensive player. How did you go about developing those skills? I'm imagining growing up in that kind of family probably mm-hmm. helped. Yeah, so my mom was always someone where softball like softball is what bonded my mom and I. So we were always in the garage. I was doing hand drills with tennis balls most of the time, and it's just, I guess, kind of what developed me. Was mom also a third baseman? No, she was actually an outfielder, so... Okay, it's a good way to learn those tennis ball drills. Cece, uh, tell us a little bit about softball in Canada. How big is it, and how did you kind of land on this sport? It is definitely a growing sport, and I'm very happy about that because I want to see softball thrive in Canada and see a lot of girls possibly come here to the States as, and get more and more opportunities as more Canadians come up here, come down here, I guess. Um, it was hard to get recruited and everything like that. There are only very few who get the opportunity to get recruited very instantly. Others have to really work for it. Um, I was one who kind of had to work for it a little bit. I had some help, which was more than others. Uh, My dad was a really big part of my softball journey. Um, He was my hitting coach. Didn't have a hitting coach up there. He was it. Um, My fielding coach. uh, I had a pitching coach when I was a pitcher, but (laughs) that was about it. Um... And really, it was just trying to get down to Seattle, get down to state tournaments all the time. I was always traveling with my uh, team and trying to get recruited. But we were always, you know, in the J pools. So nobody was watching us. Everyone was watching A, B, C, and D. No one was watching J. So it was always so rough trying to get schools um, to come watch us. But luckily, emailing was a big thing for us um, as a team. And uh, we got some people to come and... Luckily, I emailed McLennan, and they said, come on, and the rest is history, I guess. So you started out at McLennan Community College in Texas, went to Grand Canyon for a year, and then landed here at Wichita State. I'm sure you've been asked a billion times about hockey. Did you play hockey? Do you love hockey? You gotta give, if you're from Canada, you got to give us the hockey background. My family is way more into hockey than I am. I, am. I think my dad is proud of what I'm doing in softball, but I think he wishes I was a hockey player. <laughs> he loved hockey. He was a um, hockey player growing up. He could have went NHL if he wanted to, um, but he I think he had an injury or something. He's really good. He's really athletic. Um, but, yeah, I played hockey for a year and then decided that softball is my jam. <laughs> softball was a thing. Yeah. 
Okay, the Shockers have won four in a row, six of eight, as we get ready for the tournament this weekend. Both of the losses were by one run, so I think we can say the Shockers are, are playing some good softball recently. Kristen, what's gone right for the Shockers over the past couple weeks? I think what's really gone right is that we've really like found the grit within our team, especially us being like on a four-game winning streak I think is a good thing for us going into conference tournament and just like trying to keep that momentum CC, what's your observation? What's what's gone right for this team? I agree. I think um, our pitchers are working together as a staff a lot, and I think that's something that will really help us in the long run when um, we need a pitching change or one pitcher is going doing so well. I think it's it's doing really good that we um, our pitchers are having our back, and then our hitters. We need to just keep doing our thing and get runs and get people in scoring position and just trust ourselves that we can get them in. And I think if um, we do that, then. We'll be okay. Yeah, the pitching has been really strong recently. We'll talk about that. Uh, so Sunday, Shockers wrapped up a sweep of Memphis. Coach Christy Breadbenner said her post-game message was, uh, it's time to live in the moment, be present. She thought maybe the past successes of this team have weighed on this group a, a little bit. Uh, Kristen, how do you go about getting in a good mental state for, for this week? I think just kind of coming in as like a clean slate because... I think conference tournament is something that means a lot to us this year in order to make a regional. So I think just coming in clean slate, starting over will be like will be extremely beneficial for us. So I think that's what's making us kind of dig in a little. CC, uh, good mental state. How do the Shockers reach that starting Wednesday? Yeah, I think um, we just got to play our game inning by inning. I think when we realize that, I think we play a lot better. Sometimes we get too in the moment, like just just stress ourselves out. Um, and once we remember, hey, guys, like pitch by pitch, you know, inning by inning, and then we're like, okay, we're okay. You know, we've practiced, we've done everything, we've played so many games, and, you know, for this moment, and we're okay. Whatever happens, happens. We just got to play our game. And at the end, if we play our game, we may win. So, Kristen, you would have you've had a, uh, have a great sense of the success of this program the last two or three seasons, having been around. Did it weigh on this team a little bit? Was there some people who were uh, I don't know how, but yeah, weighed down or, or worried about making NCAA regionals in February when you couldn't really make the NCAA regionals? Yes, I think we came into the season kind of expecting a regional, and I think that's kind of what started our season kind of rocky. But I think once we kind of, like, accepted the fact that this team isn't last year's team and last year's team wasn't the year before's team, like, I think just coming to that realization is kind of what helped us. But I think once we realized that we really got to, deep, like, dig deep for this regional, I think that's when we all kind of stuck together. Like, we were having talks after games of, like, what can we do? Like, what's going on? What can we do? And I think just that built our chemistry as a team also. Like being able to rely on each other and like just trusting each other is, I think, what got us to this moment. So the Shockers usually play a really strong non-conference schedule. Uh, that was no exception this year. Warren Noland. Dot com has it ranked number six nationally. Uh, CC facing that kind of competition, you hope that pays off. How, is, how has that helped? How has that shaped this team playing the Arkansas, the Oklahomas, the Oklahoma States? I think it was really beneficial. I think win or loss, um, we went in there and we just tried to hit the ball. You know, they're spinning that ball. They are whipping that ball in pretty fast. Um and we just kind of went in there, and we got hits. I mean, we may have lost the game, but we got hits. And I think that's what really kind of boosted confidence. Like, we can hit the best pitching there is out there. We can do that. So let's just, like, let's just keep working towards, you know, we may not be seeing the best pitching in the entire world this weekend, but there's good pitchers in our conference. But we've, we've hit the best, so let's just go in there, stay confident, and just kind of, I guess the motto is just be us. <laughs> Kristen, you were nodding your head. What's it? How, how does it help facing those kind of teams? I think playing teams like that, we kind of went in with the mindset of we're supposed to lose. So why not? Like, why not give it all we have? And if we win, that's it's a huge thing for us. So I think that's what really calmed us down, like, in the box and on the field, and especially our pitchers, too. Our pitchers pitched a great game against those schools. So I think just going in and realizing that, they're the team that's supposed to win 
according to stats and such. So just giving it, like, once again, just digging in and just giving it what we have, I think is what really boosted our confidence in these games. Yeah, you mentioned the pitching again. Uh, Allison Cooper pitched really well against the Sooners last month. That would stand out. I thought Lauren Howell and Allison Cooper really battled against Oklahoma State game pretty recently, given gave the Shockers a chance to win. So if you go back to mid-April, uh, Shockers have held 11 of their 13 opponents to three or fewer earned runs, four shutouts. Uh, Lauren Howell's coming off a one-hitter against Memphis. Uh, Chloe Barber's been really good. Uh, the defense has also been really good. I think two errors in the past nine games. So Kristen Wise, the defense and the pitching, are those two things meshing together to, to put this team in a good spot now? I think so for sure, especially just because we've had those conversations of, like, we have your back, so you got to have our back too, like us, the defense, and the pitchers. And I think that gives the pitchers the confidence to just throw the ball. Throw it where it needs to be pitched, and if it gets hit, we're behind you. And I think that's what really builds like the defense chemistry. Sammy Hood is back from injury at second base. She's excellent there. Taylor Solacek seems to have settled in at shortstop. How much is having some continuity on the infield helping this picture? I think at first it was a little rocky just because we were still kind of figuring out who's going to play where. But I think once Taylor really settled in, she has an amazing presence at shortstop. She's big, she's loud, like she just has a great presence in the middle infield, and Sammy has an amazing glove over at second. So I think that just gives everyone like a sense of like, I guess being calm and just kind of being like, we know we're good and like we know we can do it. And I think that's what helps our pitchers too. So a lot of these, uh, we've got your back, just throw the ball and we'll field it. Conversations happen obviously on the infield, you would be involved in them. What's your role? What are you saying to a, to a pitcher when there's a couple runners on and, and, you know, and it's really getting to a difficult spot? How are you keeping them calm and focused? I think something I say a lot is that, like, we got you. Like, you just, like, you pitch your game and, like, we'll play ours. Like, we got you. Like, don't worry about the ball getting hit. Like, the ball is probably going to get hit. We are playing at a Division One level. So it's really hard for your ball not to get hit. And so I think that's what we're there for and that's kind of what I talk to our pitchers a lot about is like we're here for a reason like we have your back. So freshman Chloe Barber has had a really good freshman season, a great start, struggled a little bit, now she's on a roll again. Cece, give us your observations about Chloe, what's made her such a good freshman for the Shockers? I think Chloe cares so much about the game and loves the game so much that when she was in her rough patch she's wanted to do so good and I think that was kind of her point where you know when she didn't do one good one inning she thought it was over um because she wanted to do it so bad every inning she wants to do well for us and so once she realized you can have a bad inning it's okay like like Kristen said they're division one hitters they're going to hit the ball it's about getting you know the next person out and coming back in there's going to be base runners there's going to be you know runs coming in but just minimizing that and getting to a spot where our hitters can come back and win the game and once she realized that that she can throw a ball here and there and it doesn't matter I think she's built more confidence um in the mound and know that her stuff is good enough to beat a lot of people Kristen, what I've noticed about Chloe in the last two or three times I've been able to watch her, she seems to really be able to get herself out of a bad situation that, you know, maybe there are two runners on, but she can rally, strike somebody out, get a ground ball. How have you seen her develop that ability here recently? I think recently she kind of just realized that she's good. And that's what, she did have a little rough patch there because, like Cece said, she cares about the game so much that we all just kind of had to like talk to her and be like you're gonna get hit and once again we're behind you for a reason like you have to trust in us like we trust in you because I think we really do trust Chloe in the circle like we do all of our pitchers but I think Chloe has a certain grit for herself that she just wants to succeed that's all she wants to do is succeed not only for herself but for the team too and I think she wants to prove that to us so I think yeah, I think her just digging in and kind of realizing that she's going to get hit and she's just got to throw the ball. I think that's what's really helped her recently. I talked to pitching coach Courtney Oliver after Sunday's game, and she said she had talked to Chloe about accepting different kinds of success, that striking out people may be a success, but also may be a success to just give up two runs in an inning and not five. Is that 
part of the adjustment from high school where you may strike everybody out to college you have to accept different different parts of success yeah so Chloe actually came in to college with one pitch you know she's from Minnesota not a lot of softball goes on in Minnesota so I think her coming in with one pitch and what she's developed to now has been like astronomically insane like she spins the ball like nothing I've ever seen before So I think just the difference of that, and I think it takes a lot for someone to come in with one pitch and become what she is now. I think that's really big. Yeah, I think she told me that she's never really lifted before coming um, to Wichita State. So I think she came in here with, I think, her highest, you know, pitches, like, consistently being, like, 63, 64, and then you get in the weight room, and you have to add, you know, it adds speed. It, it added a bunch of speed to her um, pitch, so she has to be able to control that now that she has the, the even more speed than what she did before, and then adding spin and adding all that. It's, it's, a, it's a hard thing to zone into, and I think she's done a really good job of doing that as a whole. She has been fun to watch this season, no doubt. Kristen, so CC having a fabulous offensive year. Uh, go back to August for us. First impression, when did you say, think to yourself, well, that, that, that woman can really hit the softball? Yeah, that's actually exactly what probably came to mind was CC came in. Well, I'll go back. Last year we had Sid McKinney, and Sid and I were really close, and I think – like, in my mind, CeCe has become the new Sid McKinney in my head. Like, Stop. especially, like, in the batting order, me and, like, Sid and I were kind of the 9-1 punch kind of thing. And I think CeCe and I have really become that, too. Especially just, like, in the box, I feel like I'm extremely confident in the box because I know CeCe's behind me. And I think that's kind of what I realized in August, too, is that this girl's good. Like, extremely good. Like, we didn't really know what to expect coming, like, within CC coming, but I think the first month she was here, like, she really left her mark on this program. Right. So, Sydney McKinney won the NCAA batting titles her junior and senior year, so CC has a chance to make it three in a row for a, for a shocker. CC, you've talked a lot about your journey coming here and why it's really worked for you well at Wichita State. For people who haven't heard, who aren't aware, give us a brief description. Why have you been such a good fit here at Wichita State? I think, you know, just the whole team, the entire, you know, staff and everything, I'll always praise them. And, you know, they've just made it so easy to be comfortable and be myself and be able to make mistakes and know that those mistakes are okay and it's um, you make them to get better. You know, you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to have a good at-bat every time. You're not going to have a good practice every time. But it's about giving your 100% every single time, even if, you know, that 100% isn't your full, you know, best. Um you're trying every time and the girls have just been so helpful and you know understanding what it is what it means to be a shocker um you know Kristen has become someone who um I can rely on like when we're hitting um we're kind of partners (laughs) and we hit together we're we're the lefties you know um some uh, we'll have Sierra and Lauren Lucas and Maddie there as well um and they have just been such a great help in staying positive you know knowing that we're all good enough to go in there and um, do our job. And it is really good. Um, as Kristen is a nine hole, I know that I'm coming up next. I know. I'm like two short, two outs. I think we, we we always laugh about it. We're always in a two out situation where Kristen's up. She gets on. I'm like, okay, here we go. Something's about to happen. <laughs> and... Um, so it's been really awesome to have just that trust in every single one of my girls, you know. If I get out, Addie's behind me. If Addie gets out, Taylor. Like, we just have such a strong lineup that no matter what happens, you know, we always have somebody up next. And I think that's what makes us very special as a team. And if we can keep doing that, um, it's going to be a good run in the postseason. So, Cece, you have aspirations to play for the Canadian national team. Tell us about your summer and, and what's coming up for you in the softball world. Yeah, so in the, um, I got an opportunity to um, be at the selection camp tryout for Team Canada, which I am so blessed to have the opportunity to do that. Um, I'm going in the middle of June to try out, and it'll be a week-long um, thing. And I'm just so excited to be able to play with some of the best um, in Canada. 
and have the opportunity to go further. And if I don't make it, then I'll always try next year. I mean, I tried out last year and they're the coaching staff, um, they are amazing. And they told me that there's some things I needed to work on. And I hope that this year um, they tell me I worked on them <laughs> and uh, be able to play for Team Canada because that's been my dream since I was a kid. We should talk about Addison Barnard, who's also wrapping up uh, just a great, great career with the Shockers. Kristen, what's it been like being her teammate? What have you observed about what's made her such a good softball player? So I've told this past weekend was our senior weekend, and I've spilt all my emotions <laughs> to all the seniors, but I think one thing that really stands out about Addie is she is seriously a blessing sent down to earth. Like, she is just so wholesome, and she's just an amazing person on and off the field. On and off the field, sorry. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about <laughs> But Addie, when I first got here as a freshman, I think was, she was a really emotional person, like, kind of similar to Chloe. Like, she just wanted to succeed so bad, and obviously she was succeeding like no other, but she also held herself to that standard, and I think that's what sets her apart from everyone else is that she has a standard for herself and she has expectations that not everyone can hold themselves to. So I think that's really what sets Addie apart. CC one season with uh, with Addie B, batting one and two in the lineup, as, as you mentioned. Tell us about your, your thoughts on Addison Barnard. Yeah, Addie is a one-of-a-kind teammate. She, like Kristen said, is the most amazing person on and off. You know, we'll be having conversations like, hey, like, how'd you feel today? You know, Addie's always coming up, like, how'd you feel today with your swing? And sometimes we're like, nah, not the greatest. And, um, and then once those days come, we're like, well, what do we do? You know, she's like, I just felt that I was too handsy or I felt, you know, just my, I just felt weak in my swing. And I think those conversations, um, you have to have trust to have those conversations. And Addie allows us to have trust with her to be able to talk. And I think that's what makes her so special and one of the biggest leaders on this team. She may not, may not be the loudest, you know, in the in the locker room. But when time comes, she'll she'll tell us like, hey, like, we're OK. You know, this is the team that we have, and we're capable of doing a lot of things. And when Addie says it, it's just like you believe it because, you know, she has been so successful and she is such a great person, and she will like just wants everybody to succeed, not just herself, but everybody. Um, and that you just gotta love Addie. You can't not love Addie. You know, she's just the kindest person ever, and she will be missed in this program for sure. Addison is a uh, senior playing center field this year from Beatrice, Nebraska. She has uh, hit more home runs than anybody else in Wichita State history. I think she's 10th uh, in NCAA history. So, yes, quite, quite a career for Addison. So both of you are veterans now. You've been through the college grind academically, athletically for several years. Pass on some of your wisdom. Kristen, what would you tell someone who is a high school junior starting this process or somebody who's in the transfer portal? What, what, what should they be looking for when they're choosing a, a college to play softball at? I think personally what I was looking for is I wanted a place to feel like home. I am an extreme homebody, and I think that was what was hard from the transition of being at home with my family to being 10 hours away in Kansas with no family. Um, I think looking for somewhere that you're going to feel confident in yourself and in your team would be a big thing. But I think that's a good thing of what Coach B does is she really makes Wichita State feel like home. Whether we're having dinners at her house or she's just checking on you or she'll check on your family or she'll just ask how you're doing that day. Like sometimes like she'll just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and I'm like like she just really makes it home I think and I think that's a big thing when you're being recruited to look for. Cece how about you what's your advice to someone pondering their college options? I think make the right fit for yourself don't get you know I guess the word like fooled by all the crazy shiny things that a school might have like, make sure that, you know, the coaching staff and the players are a team you want to play for, not just the school's name, but the staff that you want to play for. Um, I think a lot of people take the first, you know, opportunity that comes at them. And, you know, some people get, you know, 
the opportunity to have multiple schools and some people only have one, but make sure that one is the right fit for you. Because if not, then I think you won't have as much success as you would want. And you start to blame other things and everything around you. Um, I think keep working on academics. That's a big thing. <laughs> um, you know, I had I went to the JUCO route, but I think McLennan has a really good education program. So I, I chose a JUCO that had a really good education program and got me ready for university. Um, whether it is the JUCO route or going Division One, Division Two, like just know that a very small percent get to do what we do and be proud of what you do, no matter what the level is. Um, and if you're in the transfer portal, just make sure that you're in, you choose the right school because I did, and I think it's you know turned out for me the right way, and I I'm so thankful for the past um, the path I took, and being able to be a shocker has been one of the best possibilities that could have ever came out of the portal and I'm so thankful. So when you're a college athlete you are on a lot of buses, airplanes, how do you pass the time? Kristen do you have a recommendation, a book you've been reading, a podcast? How do you uh, how do you while away the hours when you're traveling? I'm a reader and I'm a sleeper. I <laughs> I try and sleep the time away because I get motion sick so I do just try and sleep most of the time but when I read it's a lot of Colleen Hoover books. I like like fantasies and nonfictions and such, but a big reader, and I feel like we're a big candy team, <laughs> so like we're all and games. What's the thing called the Switch? A lot of the girls have a Switch, so we're all playing on that. Um, what all... is a Switch? You're gonna have to describe that. <laughs> a... It's it's a Nintendo Switch. It's like a DS, um, but f- cooler and more techno like techy, tech savvy. It's mm-hmm. Kind of crazy, I had to get used to it a little bit, but we always play Mario Kart. Our team is a big Mario Kart team, and we are competitive. We want to win, and we will talk <laughs> crap <laughs> to each other if we're winning or we're losing. <laughs> okay, who's the best Mario Kart player on the team? Oh, it goes back and forth. I think Loki Maddie. <laughs> Maddie is like an underdog. Yeah. Like she's Bailey's learned, she's gotten really good, but if Allie's playing, Allie wins all the time. Mm-hmm. Allison Cooper is our uh, is our winner for Mario Kart, but we got some competitive like Maddie, Lauren Lucas, you know Bailey, Laney. We all compete. Addie will come in there sometimes, and she'll compete in Mario Kart. It's always so fun. It's yeah. I literally just smile. <laughs> okay, Kristen, a reader, love it, love it when we get readers on. CC, how about you? Do you have a, a Netflix recommendation, or what, what's what's taking up your idle time that you would recommend for people? I just rewatched um, Bridgerton because the new season's coming out, and I'm a huge Bridgerton girly. Um, I also just rewatched um, House of the Dragon because I know that's coming out soon and stuff. So I haven't had like a new show I've been watching, but I've been re-watching stuff because the new seasons are coming out and I want to get ready for it because I get, love that stuff. Got to get prepared. That makes yes. sense. All right, the Shockers, they are the fourth seed in the American Athletic Conference Championship. That starts this week at Wilkins Stadium. Wichita State plays 7 o'clock Wednesday against ninth seeded UTSA. The winner of that faces either Tulsa or South Florida. Could start a long road for the Shockers. They would have to win Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday to get back to the NCAA Regionals. CC and Kristen, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Hi, this is Rick Muma, president of Wichita State University. Check out the latest episode of the Forward Together podcast. Each episode, I sit down with different guests from Shocker Nation to celebrate the vision and mission of Wichita State University. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for listening to the Roundhouse Podcast, courtesy of Wichita State University Strategic Communications. We encourage you to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can find more Roundhouse content at GoShockers.com. Bradshaw into Wingate. Wingate's going to dribble it a couple of times and throws it in the hands of Kuznart. Threw it away. Kuznart to Ryan Martin for the dunk. The Shockers are going to the Sweet 16. 
It's all over. The Shocker's up seven. Three seconds. Two. Jumper by Smith is no good. Wichita oh, State to the Sweet 16. <laughs>